ओम वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्य कोटि सम प्रभा निर्विघ्न कुरु मे देवा सर्वकार्येशु सर्वदा सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामरूपिनी विद्यारंभं करिष्यामि सिद्धिर्भवतु मे सदा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुदेव परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम नारायण हरिओम इन ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम नायगर फॉल्स इफ यू डोंट बिलीव दैट एब्सोल्यूट पीस इंडिपेंडेंट जॉय वट एवर डिस्क्रिप्शन यू वॉन्ट टू यूज इज पॉसिबल You will never live in the present. Living in the present will be impossible because we're always going to pleasures we experienced in the past and planning for pleasures we want to experience in the future. We don't feel peace is possible so we're going to the past and to the future. But we've experienced peace before. on our yatra on our yatras there was absolute peace and independent joy you were happy for no reason having tuned into that we fallen out of that absolute peace that independent joy and falling out is not physical it is mental our minds are distracted our minds are dependent this is the reason we're studying manashodhanam to make our minds focused to make our minds independent the problem is mental the solution is mental also in shloka 21 of manashodhanam Swami Tejumayananda is going through different problems the mind has and solutions for these problems. And I just mentioned one of the problems we have is that we're dependent. We're dependent on flavorful food. We're dependent on people's opinions. And the more dependent a mind is, the more distracted a mind is. And these feed into each other. the more distracted i am the more i depend on social media in the sense that it's an escape forum for me now there is a deep ramification of a dependent and distracted mind is we can't sleep when we lie down at night the body is just a machine the body doesn't even have to be turned off but the mind We don't know how to turn the mind off. And so we can't sleep. And if I can't sleep, then I can't wake up. And this waking up has to be interpreted at two levels. One is relative. If I lie down in bed at 11 p.m. but I don't sleep till 1 a.m., then though I set my alarm for 6 a.m., I'm actually going to get up at say 8 a.m. And my whole morning becomes rushed then. but more so i can't wake up to my 
infinite nature. Because my mind owns me, it doesn't follow the intellect. I can never wake up to my infinite nature. This is a sleep of ignorance. So Swamiji highlights all of this. And in Shloka 22, the various gunas are not introduced, but they're elaborated upon. And we have to look out for what's going on inside before we can go outside, before we can help others. Share differently. You have to save your head and heart. This has to be your priority before anything else that you do. If you lose your head, if you lose your heart, you are a liability to yourself and to others. In this shloka, Guruji is talking about what our sole priority should be. Once this priority is in line, all other priorities will fall into line. And now we reach the end of the text and the last three shlokas like so many of the texts that we've studied, are not teachings as much as congratulations, as a valedictory address. So we're on Shloka 23. Please repeat. Upadesham imam nityam Upadesham imam nityam Vimrashami punaf punaha. Vimrashami punaf punaha. Shamanam cha prapashami. Shamanam cha prapashami. Malanam tu shanai shanaihi. Malanam tu shanai shanaihi. In the first quarter, Upadesham imam nitya, the upadesha that, have, that has been shared over the last 22 verses, nitya. This upadesha is eternal and I should be perpetually engaged in this upadesha. Not inside in mind and then out of sight, out of mind. Nityam. And some interpret Nityam as daily, and certainly daily is better than weekly, but Nityam doesn't mean daily, it means perpetually, constantly. And if you think of this word Upadesha some more, if you were to change this into English words, it could be teaching. I think a better word is guidance. Upadesha's guidance. Guidance can only come from someone who has been to the ends. And now they're guiding us through the means to the ends. And one more word that comes to mind in regards to Upadesha is love. This Upadesha that we've been receiving for an entire year has come from Srimad Bhagavatam has come from Swami Tejramayananda. Srimad Bhagavatam and Swami Tejramayananda don't know us. But still, they've put in all of this effort for us to experience independent joy. So when we hear the word Upadesha here, or Upadesha Sara, think about how much love is being shared with us. In the next quarter, Vimrashami punaf punaha. Vimrashami means reflecting upon. I'd use the word engaging, internalizing, again and again and again. The way to go from belief to faith is manana. All of us are believers. Rarely do we meet someone who's a non-believer. But special people, unique seekers, are those with faith. 
And one gauge of someone who's growing from being a believer to being faithful is reflecting becomes more natural to them. Like a talented athlete or someone who is artistic, that comes natural to them. Jumping, running, stamina, looking into nature. But for someone who's you know, a poor athlete, it's very unnatural to jump, to throw. So if reflection comes natural to you, or is becoming more natural, when there's a hardship, you reflect upon that. When you're in a conversation that's not related to you, but you're listening to that and you're learning from it, it shows that you're having more faith in everything that's been taught to you thus far. Shamanam cha prapashami. Prapashami means I see pashami, but prapashami means it's not seeing so much as feeling. And what do I feel? Shamanam. A reduction. A reduction in all that I don't want. A reduction in all that I'm not. So this can be vices, this can be the ego, ignorance. I think a fine way for us to understand this quarter all of us are less reactive and more responsive. We've known each other for a long time. We've engaged in satsang and seva and sadhana for a long time. All of us have become more responsive. And that shows that we're letting go of what we don't want. We don't want to be reactive. Nobody wants to be reactive. So that's happening. We feel that. And that's a lovely way to package yoga. Yoga means self-development or perpetual betterment. If I'm becoming more responsive, then I'm engaged in yoga. Life is great in the sense that we have endless opportunities to learn. I see so much of learning with Sheila and I just between child one and child two. And that shows that we're doing what has been taught in Manashodhana. But if we don't become better parents, then we're not engaged in yoga. We can say, you know, we're Hindus and we follow Sanatana Dharma, but we don't. It's just a label. And finally, mala nam tu shenai shenaihi. This mala, in a very deep sense, is, is vasanas. That is being exhausted. That's being erased. A vasana makes you think and speak and act in a way that is not who you are. In a relative sense, we call that confusion. When you don't think in a, in a way that's genuine, you're confused. So there's less confusion and there's more clarity. Clarity is so important in, in living, in life. There's clarity. Let's read this shloka together again. Upadesham imam nityam vimrashami punaf punaha shamanam chaprapashami malanam tu shanai shanaihi And the next <coughs> shloka. How did this all happen? How is it that we came together? How is it that we got to experience our yatras and, and study Advaita Vedanta? Ishvara Nugraha Devam Ishvara Nugraha Devam Prasadena Gurostatha Prasadena Gurostatha Kim na sadhyam maya loke. Kim na sadhyam maya loke. Nishchinto ham atoduna. 
nishchinto ham ato dhuna. All of this has come about because of Ishvara Anugraha, the grace of God. Anugraha, which means grace, is really vichara. When you engage in thinking, when you engage in reflection, when you inquire, you're coming to see, you're coming to feel what's already there. Almost like water in the ground. When you're digging, you come to see and experience that water that's already there. Now that's a, a physical example with physical limitations. We should almost feel it like a, a sinking up with the Creator, S-Y-N-C. When we engage in vichara, we're syncing up with the Creator, and the Creator is infinite. The Creator is love. So we start to feel that too. This sinking is exhibited or expressed prasadena gurostata as the guidance of the Guru Shishya Parampara. In the guidance of the Guru Shishya Parampara. I have uh, started training for our, our half marathon. So I've been doing seven and a half kilometers every other day, and that's a lot of time to think. Initially 30 minutes, now 40 minutes, and it's going to keep on growing. A half marathon may take more than two hours, where there's really nothing else you can do but think. So as we wrapped up all of our weekly courses and now our monthly courses all are completed in this month, the greatest gift that I've ever received, and I've thought about this a lot, thinking about this comprehensively, is the Guru Shishya Parampara. And I'm not saying Bhagavan, because Bhagavan is ever present. And so is the Guru Shishya Parampara, but it doesn't feel like that. As an ignorant person, it doesn't feel like the Guru Shisha Parampara is ever present, but now it is present in my life. So the greatest gift, more than my parents, more than my children, and the greatest gift that the Guru Shisha Parampara is giving is Advaita Vedanta. Because in Advaita Vedanta, this is founded on love, it is founded on that which is most natural, which is oneness. So you think lots about this too, about what is the grace of God, what is the guidance of the Guru. When you are synced in with the grace of God, when you're aware of the guidance of the Guru, kim na sadhyam maya loke, what is there that you can't do? In this world, what is impossible to you? There is nothing that you can't do. And I've shared this in many courses with all of you. You know you're closer to Guru and God when you start to feel you can be anything, you can do anything. And in a more tactile way, Yesterday at the uh, Toronto Raptors game, then President Obama was there, Drake was there. And to become President Obama, to become the President of the United States, that can take someone an entire lifetime. The same goes with being as popular as Drake. It may take one an entire lifetime. But to be enlightened, this is not about a lifetime, this is about lifetimes. When you begin to feel that you can be enlightened, that is uh, how this third quarter really comes to life. The reality is, is felt. And so the last quarter says, 
Nischinto aham athodhuna, which means I don't have any worries anymore. No more stress, no more anxiety, no more sadness. Because I know about this grace and guidance. And if there is any anxiety, the only anxiety is how come I'm not enlightened right now? How come I'm not free already? That's the only anxiety one has. And that's a really deep anxiety. It's called mumukshitvam. This anxiety puts an end to all other anxieties. Because one is tuned into that which is absolute. When you have that which is absolute or close to that, who cares about the relative? And who cares about the relative means the relative is put in its place. It's not given less value or more value. Just given relative value. We'll read this shloka together. Ishwaranugraha devam prasadena gurostatha kim nasadhyam maya loke Nishchintoham atoduna. The concluding shloka reminds me a lot of Viveka Chudamani. In Viveka Chudamani, it's a, it's a story of a seeker from ignorance to enlightenment, like Bhagavad Gita. And at the end of Viveka Chudamani, the Shisha essentially tells the Guru, Hariyom, and they go their own way, that the Shisha has been enlightened and is so independent. And the same is shared here. There's a different meter, again, like a celebration. Prapashya, prapashya mishigram manaso hi shuddhim. Prapashya mishigram manaso hi shuddhim. Lina swarupe bhavita cha buddhi. Lina swarupe bhavita cha buddhi. Pashyan nijananda swarupa lokam. Pashyan nijananda swarupa lokam. Sukham charishyami sadavi muktaha. Sukham charishyami sadavi muktaha. Guruji shares here. Prapasyami. I will gain shigram quickly. Manaso he should him purity of mind, clarity of mind. This word shigram, though it's in relation to time, actually indicates simplicity. At this point of studying, one should know, one should feel that if they continue with sadhana, that they will reach the sadhya. You keep engaging in your disciplines and you will be enlightened. You don't have questions. You're not engaged in intellectual hypothesizing and shastra vasana. It's just sadhana. And that's a lovely position to be in because there's so much simplicity. I would describe maya as complexity and the guru shishya parampara bhagavan as simplicity. Lina swarupe bhavita cha buddhihi. My intellect is absorbed in my own nature. In a technical sense, where does the ego live? What is the home of the ego? It's the intellect. Remember, the 
ego identifies. If the ego has nothing to identify with, then the ego is essentially dead. But if the ego has something to identify with, it lives, and the more it identifies with, the more it lives. So now think about this. Let me go in a practical sense first. The more the ego identifies with, that really shows dependency, correct? I identify with that bench. I identify with that driveway. I identify with the neighbor. Right? I'm dependent on all of that. But what is independence? It's where you're taking all of that identification away. That there's nothing for the ego to identify with. And when it has nothing to identify with, it almost collapses upon itself to identify with the spirit. So the ego identifies what is the first possible identification the ego can engage in with the intellect then the mind, then the breath, then the body. You know, you just keep on going outwards like that. Tell me a sign of the ego. And this is a very rudimentary. What is a sign of the ego identifying with the intellect? What are you always feeling like? Starts with the D. I am the deserver. First, the deserver. And why I say deserver, it's more rudimentary than, than doer. Whenever we feel we're being taken for granted, we don't deserve that. Whenever we have expectations of others, this is what I deserve. It's, it's very experiential. We are all stuck in this being a deserver. But as you start to become more inward looking, you let go of deservership. That doership is still there. That I'm doing and you're not doing. Or I'm doing and look at me. You're not doing so nobody looks at you. But as you inquire more, you let go of doership and it's instrumentship then. I am simply an instrument of my creator. And as you inquire fully, when that, that intellect is no longer identified with by the ego, but the intellect, everything's absorbed in the spirit. You can call it non-instrumentship which is a really weird phrase, so better is your being then. You're not deserving, you're not doing, you're not instrumenting, but you're being. There's that oneness. And in the last quarter, Sukham Charishyami Sada Vimuktaha, then wherever I go, any sort of condition, space, time, matter, there is only freedom. There is only joy. And I'm going to invest a little bit of time here. When one identifies with the self, one starts to see, one starts to feel the self in all. Yes? We've studied that so many times. Seeing and feeling the self in all, you start to love all then. You love all. Now, how to think about this and not to make it poetical. It's astounding how much we love the body. If you think of someone who's hurt you by doing, by not doing, it's hard to forget that hurt. And if they did this in a malicious way, in a very deliberate way, it's even harder to forget. But think about how many times the body has let you down. Constipation. <laughs> you, you biting your teeth, poking your eye, hitting your elbow, whatever it is. But like, do you remember the last time your teeth bit your tongue? Right? It, it, how much we love this body, we just forget totally forget 
That's how we have to be with others. And we do everything for this body, despite it, keep, it continuously letting us down. We get cavities, our hair falls out, we can't run as much. But we still keep serving this body, isn't it? If you go to Bharat, you come back from Bharat, as soon as you arrive in a hotel or your home, you take a shower. As soon as you come back, you take a longer shower, correct? You perpetually serve this body. So now, you know, this is a very elevated message. One way we can lift ourselves, lift ourselves to this is to have less dislikes. Do what it takes to have less dislikes towards yourself, the people around you. Let's read this shloka again, and then we'll read the first shloka too. Prapasyami shigram manaso hi shuddhim Lina swarupe bhavita cha buddhihi Pashyan nijananda swarupa lokam Sukham charishyami sada vimuktaha And our course is called Smriti Hour. It's an opportunity to remember the peace of our yatras. It's an opportunity to remember where we started our studies and now where we're completing our studies with this text. We're on Shloka 1. We'll read it together. Paramatma Dvayanandaha Sarva bhuta stito piha Agnane navrato drishtaha Tataiva cha mano malaihi. And we pray to Bhagavan Vishnu of our Srimad Bhagavatam and to the Guru Shishya Parampara, Puja Swami Tejumayananda, specifically that the purity of mind that they have, that may we invoke the same, and that we feel less confused and more clear. Oh. Nah, nah.